Hi guys, today's topic is gonna be about the importance of genetics in bodybuilding. I think a lot of people disregard this topic, so I decided to share my opinion about it. Let's get it started. There are a couple of factors that determine your genetics. And the first one is your body type. There are three main body types in general and they are ectomorph, endomorph and mesomorph. But this doesn't mean that you should be exactly one of them. Because you can be a mix between two body types like me for example. I am between ecto and mesomorph. And probably a lot of other people are somewhere in between these three main body types. So, they can give you an idea and coordinate you, but it doesn't mean that you are exactly one of them. Now, let's take a look at each one of them separately. The ectomorph is the typical skinny guy. Ectomorphs struggle to gain weight and they have very fast metabolism. Probably everyone has that one friend that eats whatever he wants and still has abs. Now, this is a typical ectomorph. They struggle to gain muscle, but on the other hand, they don't gain fat too. The next body type is endomorph. They are the totally opposite of ectomorph. They are big and with high tendencies to store fat. If you are endomorph, you should be very strict with your diet because every calorie can make a big difference in your body fat percentage. The next body type is the mesomorph. Now this is the best body type for bodybuilders. The mesomorphs are muscular with a good metabolism and they have a very responsive muscle cells so they can gain muscle pretty quick which makes mesomorphs the perfect body type for bodybuilding. The second factor I'm going to mention is the bone construction and especially shoulder to hip ratio. In order to look aesthetic and have the V-shaped upper body you need to have broad shoulders and slim waist. When I was competing I've seen bodybuilders around 75 kilograms that look bigger than me when I was 90 kilograms and this is because the slim waist creates an illusion that the back and the arms are bigger than they actually are. So the bone construction is something very important for bodybuilding and it's also something you can't change. The third factor is the muscle shape, tendon attachments and tendon lengths. The muscle shape is also something you can't change and you can grow your muscles and they can get stronger but their shape stays the same. Tendons are the connective tissue that attaches muscles to the bone. People with shortened tendons have bigger potential to grow their muscles because their muscle belly is bigger than people with longer tendons. The muscle building potential of each muscle group is also different and it's something you can't change. Probably most of you have that one or two muscle groups that just don't grow as fast as the other muscle groups in your body. For me it was the chest and the legs and especially the upper chest and the vastus medialis muscle or the so called teardrop of the quad muscles. I always trained my chest as hard as I could but it never grew as big as I wanted it to be. Same thing with my legs, I have slightly longer legs and I always had problems with getting good size on my quads. So the muscle shape and the attachments are very important if you want to have a good looking and aesthetic physique. Especially for the arms, the good attachments and the good muscle shape makes the whole arm look full and bigger. The last factor is the muscle building potential. Everyone has a different muscle building potential and some people can gain muscle a lot faster than others, even if they both train and eat the same way. Naturally men can gain between 15 and 25 kilograms of muscle throughout their whole lifetime and the amount of muscle you can gain naturally for one year is around 12 kilograms maximum. The best gains usually happen during the first year of training because after a couple of years of training your body adapts to the workouts and you need to do constant changes in order to grow. Also the more closer you're getting to your maximum genetic muscle building limit the harder it gets to build muscle. I personally can say that the first year I started lifting weights more seriously and I learned about nutrition so I knew what I was doing at the gym and in the kitchen I gained about 6 kilograms of muscle. 
but after many years of training and trying to be bigger and better as I can, I got stuck. So at some point, probably in 2013, I got to a shape and a size that I just couldn't surpass, no matter what I was doing. And I was training at 100%, but I was just staying the same. Even my strength was stuck, so I just couldn't make any progress. What I've noticed is also that I needed to train at 100% just to maintain that shape. Otherwise, my shape was going down. I think that at that point I had reached my genetic limit or I was pretty close to reaching it. And what I see in the fitness industry today is that a lot of people with good genetics give false expectations to their followers by saying that their physique is achievable and not mentioning the importance of genetics. I've been doing personal coaching through the years and from this experience I can say that all of the people had results but some people gain muscle a lot faster than others and that everyone have a different muscle building limit. If you put 100 people on the same training plan and the same diet, you don't expect them to have the same results. What I'm trying to say is that when someone is big and lean and he's saying that his physique can be achieved naturally, doesn't mean that everyone can achieve it. It's like in every other sport, if you put 100 people to train and eat the same way as Usain Bolt, you don't expect them to run as fast as him, right? It's genetics. So after everything said, the conclusion is that genetics are very important for bodybuilding. If you ask me, they are arguably the most important thing in bodybuilding. So that's why you should never try to look like certain individuals you see online because you don't have their genetics. The only option you have is to dedicate yourself to the training process work with your genetics and try to get the best of them so guys i hope this video was helpful if you find it helpful please like the video subscribe to my channel and hit that bell thanks for watching